Hi everyone, so today we're going to be discussing an interesting topic and that is that what is the biggest landslide possible for Donald Trump at this point? So this is a uh, very interesting, so Trump's approval in all the states, that's not too good. 17 favorable states, 33 unfavorable states, and then one that's kind of a uh, pure toss-up, I guess. Um, in Arizona, he's underwater. In Alaska, he's barely above water. But then still, in Wyoming, it's plus 31. In West Virginia, it's plus 24. In Alabama, it's plus 20. And that's very interesting because... These are states that he needs to win in 2020 to get re-elected. If he wants to get re-elected, he needs to carry Pennsylvania. He's underwater by 10. If he wants to get re-elected, he needs to carry Michigan. He's underwater by 15. If he wants to get re-elected, he needs to win Wisconsin, in which he's underwater by 6. And then there's that's not to mention other swing states like Colorado, when he, where he's underwater by 18. New Mexico, underwater by 18. Utah underwater by six, Arizona underwater by seven. Very blue states underwater by 30 in Maryland. Let's take a look at the beginning of his presidency. In in California, he he was just barely underwater, and that's very good in a blue state. He was above water in many, many Democratic states. New Jersey, he was above. Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, I mean, Vermont, like, definitely something to note. And then, look look at all the green now to all the red. Look at that switch. Many Republican states have gone into that whitish category. Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Arizona, Alaska, for goodness sake. Montana, Indiana, this is the vice president state. He's un- above water by four here. I mean, it's really hard to, with these approval numbers right now, it's very difficult to make a clear case for Trump in 2020. I mean, it's really difficult for, for us to see how Trump can... Uh, win I guess um just going down to uh anyway um okay so we don't get to see DC which I thought would be interesting to look at but um anyway so we're going to go through what's the biggest landslide possible for Donald Trump so I'm just going to do it in safe I'm not going to go through the likely because that's going to take forever so for Trump's biggest landslide possible he would win all the states he won in 2016 without a question I mean that's really not um I guess in question for a biggest landslide possible thing um I'm just going through and filling in all the states that Trump won in 2016 so He's at 306, so let's start adding to Trump's column. How far can he go before we're just getting silly and it's unrealistic? It's not unrealistic at all that he carries Minnesota. That's not unrealistic. Same thing, it's not unrealistic that he carries Nevada and New Hampshire. I would say that Minnesota, Nevada and New Hampshire are Trump's biggest pickup opportunities in 2020, followed by Virginia and Colorado, followed by Washington and Oregon, followed by New Jersey, Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, those kind of states, followed by states like Illinois, New York, but of course we're not going to go that far. So Trump is at 326. I reckon that we could push it to Virginia with all the states' turmoil right now with the Democrats in flames in Virginia I could see Trump carrying Virginia in a biggest landslide possible. Colorado was interesting, but Republicans won this state in 2004, and 
I could see Trump narrowly winning the state of Colorado in the best case. And same thing with the main at-large, um, I guess, the, like, seat. So, 350, I kind of feel, is Trump's absolute ceiling. I mean, we could say that he could carry New Mexico. We could say that he could carry Oregon. But at this point, it's not likely when he's underwater by 23 in Oregon and underwater by 18 in New Mexico. So I kind of feel that this is his limit. So now let's go through some Democratic states. So Hawaii is staying with the Democrats. California is staying with the Democrats. Massachusetts is staying with the Democrats. Rhode Island, Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland and the District of Columbia and Vermont I see staying with the Democrats. So New York and Illinois, I could see in a biggest landslide possible getting interesting, but it, it there's still no way I could see Trump winning either of those states. And the same thing goes for New Mexico. And with Washington and Oregon, I mean, just looking at his approval numbers, absolutely disastrous. T- underwater 27 in Washington underwater 23 in Oregon if we look at the the thing itself look at this 37 percent of people in Oregon approve of the job Trump is doing and 35 percent in Washington and that's not even mentioning his massive disapproval ratings in both of those states so I do feel that Washington and and Oregon are slightly out of the mix. Now, if this was some something like a Nancy Pelosi running or like a Hillary Clinton running, in a biggest landslide possible, I could see Trump making Washington and Oregon interesting. But at the end of the day, I still think that they would stick with their DNA of being Democratic states in the end. So... Biggest landslide possible, 350 for Trump, 188 for the Democrat. Again, very unlikely this will happen. In fact, with the approval rating numbers, I can bring them up again now, I see this being next to impossible. But with someone like Nancy Pelosi running or Chuck Schumer running or, you know, one of those really, Hillary Clinton, I just cannot see that... Trump would be able to win in some of these states. So biggest landslide possible, 350 for Trump, 188 for the Democrat. Thank you for watching this video. Comment down your suggestions below. I'll do a, um, I guess, one for the Democrats soon. Um, But yes, thank you for watching. And comment down your suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.